scripture says in Matthew chapter 6, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor, nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Why are you anxious about these things? And then he goes on and describes the birds of the air and the lilies of the valley, etc. He concludes by saying, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. We have a question from someone who tragically lost a child. I want to encourage all of you who are watching to uh, take, a, take a look at the resources that Mark Inc. Ministries offers on grief. There are many of them. And uh, grief is always a very, very difficult thing to nail down as to how you're supposed to do it. Each person's different. Each person's an individual. And because of that, they will grieve differently. There's no one right way to grieve. But in this particular case, I wanna read this question where it says, we have lost our three-year-old daughter two years back. She describes this tragedy that took place. I went to work and she was home with the maid. She kept the balcony door open and walked away to do some work. My daughter fell down from the fourth floor balcony and she died. I am not able to get out of my own guilt. I keep thinking, if I didn't go to work, maybe she would have been saved. So many if questions are running in my mind. God has blessed me with a son now. He's one years old. Now I am having so much fear that something will happen to my son also. Even though I am faithful, this fear of death is troubling me sometimes. I am not able to overcome this guilt and fear. Could you please guide me? I can guide you through my own experience with grief. When we lost our son in a sudden car accident in 1993, uh, grief took over. It was a dark place in our home to be. And fear is very much a part of the grieving process. We have fears all the time. What if I had done this? What if I had done that? If one circumstance would have changed, he would not have been killed. That was my reasoning. And I think that's a normal reasoning for people to have when they lose a loved one. If only, if only, if only. It's one of the great ifs, tragic ifs with which we live. But there's another if in the Bible that I think is the greatest, if only of all. If God be for us, who can be against us? I think it's very natural for you to fear that something is going to happen to your one-year-old. After all, you've experienced a great tragedy. I can't even begin to tell you how sorry I am that you're going through this. I, I, I think it would be very tragic for you to come home and realize that your three-year-old fell off the balcony. And all of the ifs, all of the things that would haunt you at that point as to what you could have done or should have done to stop it. Well, in Matthew's gospel, in chapter six, what the passage that I just read to you, uh, Jesus talks about what is it going to accomplish for you to worry, to be gripped by fear, for you to live in that isolation, that darkness of fear, are you gonna add one single day to your life? Now, you know what that tells me? That tells me that our days are appointed, that God knows the beginning and he knows the end. In fact, he knows the end from the beginning. So he knew that he would give you that child for three years, but he also knew, knew that in three years she would die and he knew how she would die. And those circumstances are all ultimately in his hands. He controls life and he controls death. You can be very easily be robbed of the joy of being the mother of that one-year-old. You could be so encumbered by fear that you don't 
live your life in such a way to enjoy the blessings of this one-year-old. You know, in the book of Job, we read that Job had 10 children and tragically, he lost all 10 of them. And yet God gave him 10 children back, not to replace the 10 that he lost, but to show that God's legacy is a, is a legacy of faithfulness. I think it's very, very important for you to grieve, but grieve properly. Bible tells us in Thessalonians that we are to grieve, but not as those who have no hope. You have hope. And that hope is not only where your child is eternally, but the hope that rests in that one-year-old where you can enjoy all of the, bl the blessings that that, that one-year-old child can give you. But you won't enjoy them if you're encumbered by fear, if you're gripping the child so tightly that you're not able to enjoy uh, the blessings of that child's life. You cannot suffocate in the grief that you're experiencing. Yes, it's proper to grieve. It's proper to grieve in such a way that's good for you. Uh, we don't all grieve the same way, but it's very, very normal to ask those if only questions. Very, very normal for you to say, what could I have done? What should I have done? But at some point along the way, you have to back off and say, God in his sovereignty, God in his providence, God who controls all things that are life and death things, that God decided to give you that child on loan for three years. In my case, it was for 16 years. Some die young, some die old, some die sick, some die healthy, some die by accidents, as you've experienced. Uh, I grieve with you. I grieve in your sorrow. I understand your pain. But at the same time, rest in the one who brings healing. Uh, he is the balm of Gilead. He is the one who gives us the peace that passes all understanding to move forward in the grieving process. I hope you can do that, and I hope this helps. Hi, my name is Melissa Weisenfels, Executive Director here at Mark Inc. Ministries. Thank you so very much for your continued support of this video series. Ask Dr. Betters is not meant to be a substitute for professional counseling, but instead is designed to extract biblical principles around the questions being asked. We encourage you to seek professional counseling if needed.